Over the last couple days, we've been back in the shooting area wearing tie-dyed lab coats, tapping various pieces of equipment, and reproducing, redoing, revisiting uh, G2 RIP testing. The entire point of it is, is that a man whose tests I really respect, his numbers I respect, his production values I respect, his uh, conclusions for the most part I respect, and uh, truthfully uh, led us to no longer publish our shooting results on YouTube or anywhere else. Shooting the Bull 410 ran um, his final test on the RIP. Doing this, he placed pork ribs in ballistic gel. He placed them greater than one inch back into the gel. And doing so um, created a shitstorm of controversy and drew some interesting conclusions. Those conclusions initially threw us and everyone else for a loop. Um, and we decided to reproduce and see what we got. That's the rest of it. Just to clarify a little bit. Shooting the Bull 410, his production values, his numbers, his results, his conclusions, everything mimicked ours on almost every round he's ever fired. That being said, it was really kind of silly for us to set up one camera, have one guy out there uh, basically confirming that what he had done with far better production values was accurate. We just technically, literally, referred everybody to shooting the bull 410. We don't have a problem with that. The man's got great production values. The problem is, is that in the third episode of his testing, he came up with some results that stunned everybody. Even me. Made no sense at all. After looking at his results, trying to figure it out, trying to understand it, we basically just said, okay, you know what, to hell with this. Let's go back in and reshoot this. Let's shoot this the way it should be done. We initially saw a massive and major flaw in his te testing methodology. So we went in, set it up, and shot it. Um, what you see with my voice running over the top of it is the original commentary Everything would have been fine. Everything would have been beautiful. It would have just published. But honestly, last night I woke up in the middle of uh, the night and realized exactly what it was that shooting the Bull 410 was trying to get across. The G2 RIP round is a neat round. It does what it's supposed to do. It is supposed to come across. What shooting the Bull 410 did that we initially saw as incorrect was he placed ribs further than one inch back into the ballistic gel. The reason this was a problem is because anybody that has ever shot this round into ballistic gel, in fact, anybody that's ever shot any hollow point round into ballistic gel, realizes that the round will usually travel one half to one inch into the ballistic gel and then come apart. It will then do its expansion and separation. If you have separation and expansion one inch back, then placing a solid object that you wish to penetrate greater than that one inch automatically leads you to believe that you're intending for that round to fail. This is what we saw. We saw the ribs back. We saw the shot. We saw that indeed it did fail. It failed to fully penetrate the ribs. Okay, so we came up with the setup you see in front of you. Um, we put the ribs on the outside where they belong. We postulated the millimeter thickness of human dermis and uh, the muscle structure surrounding it. We further realized that unless you are a uh, national caliber bodybuilder, you have less than one inch to two inches of pectoral muscles surrounding ribs. We realized that, uh, you know, that traditionally you're not hitting anything further back in. 
In other words, what you have to do is you have to penetrate skin, muscle, and the actual rib bone itself prior to entering the cavity mimicking ballistic gel. This is what we did. Um, and sure, we were able to penetrate a rib, which is, in my mind, uh, the simplest thing possible. You're firing a projectile. Even a 45 moves 800 feet per second. You have a relatively hard object moving at feet per second speeds. It will crack a bone. Uh, anybody that's ever been in a fight and broke a, broke a rib either by getting hit or by hitting someone realizes, hell, if you can break a rib by throwing you know mile per hour punch, you ought to be able to break a rib by shooting into it feet per second. It made no sense why he did what he did. The conclusion that I came up with in the middle of the night was that what he was trying to show is what happens if your first shot out of the gun impacts something other than a human body. In other words, what if it happens to impact a forearm, something crossed in front of the ribs? What if it hits... Um, your hands out in front holding a firearm aimed at you. What happens if? In that situation, in that case, that would explain the over one inch setback of the ribs in the ballistic gel. Now, you're correct shooting a bull 410. If, you, if that is your intention and you do impact a forearm, and then expecting the G2 rip to continue through the forearm, into the ribs, into the body, into the vital organs. No, it's not going to happen. But logically, and I'm not defending the rip, nor am I saying your methodology is incorrect. What I am looking at is this. Nobody fires one shot. To set up a test in the manner in which you did indicates that we believe in a one-shot uh, system. We believe in a one-shot kill. We believe that you fire once, look over the top of your gun, assess, and then fire again. Now, we're going to fire multiple times. If you strike the forearm the first time, will the bullet penetrate the forearm, break the ribs, go in, the trocars then fly around and do their job? No, sir, they will not. You have proven that. I have proven that. Every single person other than the manufacturer has proven that. Now, maybe the manufacturer knows this to be true. I don't know. But the bottom line is, is all testing indicates that should the RIP round encounter any object of substance, and we're not talking about a piece of paper, we're not talking about cardboard, we're probably not even talking about wallboard, because we have shot it into wallboard and it penetrated right on through. Um, if it impacts anything with the density of ballistic gel, which a forearm probably would in, have a shoulder, a bicep, uh, you know, Kai Green, world-class bodybuilder, his pectoralis muscles would indicate, then no, 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 we're not going to break ribs and we're not going to get to any of the uh, vital organs. If we hit that, and they move, and we fire again, which, you know, most people recoil in pain, they move in pain, whatever. Should this bullet strike chest cavity first, unobstructed, it will indeed penetrate a rib, it will indeed send the trocars into the body cavity. And yeah, they will only go four inches, but they've gone four inches into the body. Uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm pretty sure that everybody on the planet is done testing RIP. I can tell you that at some point in time, things being what they are, somebody somewhere will probably use an RIP round in true self-defense, and we will all wait with bated breath. Oh, I'm not going to hold my breath, but we all will all wait with bated breath to see what the medical examiner says, the damage to the internal organs are due to the trocars. The one thing we did see with the trocars, every single test, is that the advertising on G2's website and the uh, uh, 
information that G2 gives us regarding their rounds is incorrect. These trail cars do not fly tip forward anywhere. Upon expansion, they flip around 180 degrees and fly backwards. Now, the simple flipping around indeed creates a wound channel. It's very difficult to see because it's slicing through gel and the gel has elasticity and wants to come back. It's very difficult to see it. We did see it this time because we were able to uh, isolate areas that the troll cars were in and traveled through. Yeah, it creates a very nice little deal. You have a uh, quarter of an inch object doing a happy dance, flipping around 180 out and making it into the body. So I think at this point, what we have done we being TDS have done is we have attempted to explain why shooting the bull 410 placed his ribs uh, in the position he did. Initially, um, the distributor and manufacturer and even myself were wondering why he would intentionally cause this to fail. It wasn't until I realized that he's showing that if it encounters something else, um, that the round will fail its initial duties. And yes, it will. It will. The troll cars will not penetrate a forearm. The troll cars will not penetrate um, once they have separated and the mass of the bullet is reduced significantly, that down to the weight of the troll cars. The troll cars have no inertia, not enough to penetrate bone, not enough to try and penetrate tough muscle. That being said, if they are intact, if the bullet is intact, in other words, it has not expanded, it has not separated, it has not done that which the bullet is intended to do, and it impacts a hard object such as a forearm, such as, such as, such as, ribs, it will go through it. Uh, even shooting a bull 410, his second video on the subject, he punched it through three quarters of an inch of plywood. It then went into ballistic media, went in one inch and came apart. So it, it, the illogic of saying that it will not penetrate rib, but yet will penetrate three quarters of an inch of plywood. Well, we should have all seen that in the very damn beginning and then realized that his setback of the ribs and the failure of that round in that position had to indicate there was something else in front of it. So I think at this point what we're going to do is I'm going to stop the voiceover, I'm going to stop the insanity, and we're going to then just pure and simple present what we did. But I believe the most telling uh, information is that which I've just finished orating. Love it, like it, don't, whatever. Um, I'm, 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 I'm done discussing G2 rep. I, I am. Uh, the round does its job. It is capable of penetrating three quarters of an inch of plywood. It is capable of firing into a forearm and coming out, and the troll cars would then probably fly into your face. If indeed it strikes rib cage, it is capable and proved numerous times that it will penetrate a density of ribs equal to three quarters of an inch of plywood. And then the troll cars will break off and fly four inches into the body. This is all it was ever asked to do. This was all that was ever expected of it to do. So I think what's going to happen now is we're going to follow with you know, the visualization of our results. The one thing I do want to tell you is this. The limitations of the G2 rip. The G2 rip is limited in that if it strikes an object solid enough for it to come apart, be it a forearm, be it a hand, be it, you know, one inch of the density of ballistic gel, the round is basically over. Where a traditional heavy, say 147 grain, 124 grain, even 115 grain bullet will continue to have the inertia to punch through um, 
the forearm, um, the shoulder, the hand, uh, the object in front of it, and then still have the inertia to punch through a rib. Um, in Shooting the Bull 410's Part 3 video, with the ribs set back, he was able to fire a spear gold dot, I believe it was 124 grain. It penetrated the ribs and continued on. It had the mass and inertia to do it. The design of the G2 rip, the design of the G2 rip, makes it impossible for it to do this job. Now, does it make it an effective combat round? I don't know. Does it make it a less effective combat round or self-defense round? I have my opinions. I would prefer to have something just overcome and continue on. I, you're lucky enough in a self-defense situation to get one or two shots on target. Um, if, if, if I end up impacting your crossed arms or your arms holding a firearm and sit in front of a uh, center mass, uh, I cannot guarantee that anything other than the 22 caliber weight base or you know a 389 millimeter sized 48 grain projectile is going to penetrate that's all i'm going to do the trail cars at that point are a waste of time uh, now should you be able to make your shots on target without any obstruction in front of it sure they're going to do their job uh, this is one of those, how accurate are you, and what are your personal feelings on this round? So now we've got two shots through rib. The lower track uh, took the lower half of a rib, penetrated it. The upper was a dead center shot on a rib. You have multiple wound tracks here. Uh, you see little things that look like a shark fin. This is where the trocars flip over, right there. The one thing you'll notice is that in all the shots of a G2 into ballistic gel, the trocars are actually flying backwards. Uh, the area that you see that is uh, pink, meat colored, indeed, is filled with bone. It's filled with uh, uh, meat. Uh, there was a considerable amount of bone fragment uh, taken in with it. Once again, if these shots impacted the torso, impacted the area of the body that you were intending to hit, they're going to do their job. It's going to punch through the rib. It's going to go in, as you see here, basically an inch, at which point the round comes apart uh, and the trocars break off flip around backwards and progress uh, from point of impact to point of rest, basically four inches into the body. And that's what they do. And that's what they do in all shots. Um, flipping the block over, we're looking 
down from the top. What you can clearly see here is a funnel area. Um, it comes in, focuses, <laughs> weights roughly one inch, and the round comes apart. Okay, so our third shot, HST, hit the bone, broke through it, gave one hell of a wound track. Looks as though it opened up a little bit going through the rib. Probably deformed going through the rib. Carries forward, keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming, keeps coming, and settles out right about there. It's going to be real interesting to recover this bullet and see the deformation coming through a, a rib. But pretty much carried 147 grain 9 millimeter, the uh, equal distance. Uh, slightly behind the two bases of the rib. Right. You look at the uh, wound tracks going backwards the one at the bottom being the one that missed the rib, but did go through uh, clothing layer and muscle tissue. In all fairness, I did not shoot through clothing with the HST. I just truthfully did not see the point. I've never had HST clog up on clothing. And we're not really trying to compare HST to rip yet again in any way, shape, or form. Uh, pure and simple, the experiment was to see whether or not the rip would penetrate a rib and what it would do uh, as far as what it did with the trocars or the pedals or whatever you want to call them.